has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Well, Carver High, the Astros sure had their problems with the Baltimore Orioles this past weekend. Uh, they certainly did, Scotty, losing at home to the Orioles on Friday night and Saturday. Yesterday, a different story. They got themselves an Alex Bregman homer, a 3-1 to one win. They avoid the sweep. But the problem for the Astros is, Scotty, they now have an injury to their top starting pitcher. Justin Verlander left the start. Calf discomfort. Let's hear from Dusty and get the latest on that. Well, we just have to, to find out he's going in for some imaging uh, tomorrow. And uh, I think it's already been reported that it was, um, he felt that when he covered first base, uh, it was his calf. And that's, uh, you know, the best of, of bad news. I mean, um, you know, we were glad it wasn't anything to do with his elbow or arm or anything like that. So we'll just have to wait until he has the imaging uh, tomorrow. Well, after he came off the field, you know, he threw that pitch and then he came off the field with the third out and then you know, he, he just went down the tunnel. He said he felt something when he went to cover first base. You know, I mean, these things happen. I mean, they can happen to anybody you know, on the field. And so, uh, like I said, I was just glad it wasn't his elbow. So, I mean, this is a huge, uh, you know, set of injuries. The Gonsolin injury, the Verlander injury. These are playoff, these are World Series caliber teams that can make it all the way. Uh, they can win it all. And uh, the Astros, in my view, cannot win the World Series without Justin Verlander. I'm not buying them without him. He's been uh, everything. I won't deny they have other good uh, pitchers. We can go on and on. Valdez. But, I mean, same thing with the Dodgers, Gonsolin. You lose a guy like that at this point in the start of September, they've got to get him back, no questions asked, for October. I would be very careful with Verlander. And I still don't think people really are afraid of Gonsolin. They, you know, no one ever talks about him. They get no juice or Anderson as if they don't even exist. Meanwhile, both of them, have, I combined, won like 30 games. Both have been excellent this year for them. No question about that. Uh, the Pirates beat the Phillies 5 nothing yesterday in Philadelphia, Scott. He raised the Jolly Roger. Michael Chavis, the RBI single on AT&T Sportsnet Pittsburgh. Infield in once again. Chavis at the plate. And how about this? Into left field for a base hit. Reynolds will score. Chavis brings him home 3 nothing. Speaking of put a fork in them, I don't care that they beat the <laughs> Phillies. They have been so stench city for the last awful. month and a half. They're awful. I can't even fathom they won a game against Philly, uh, to be honest with you. And believe me, you, uh, the Steelers season is starting, and that is the end of the Pirates season. Once the Pittsburgh Steelers start playing, I mean, where do you see the crowds at PNC now? They'll draw 3,000 a night. If there was a good thing, Scotty, for the Yankees losing a couple games in Oakland this past weekend, it was that the Rays and the Jays were also losing ball games this weekend. The Rays lose two out of three in Fenway. They did avoid the sweep on Sunday. Randy Arozarena had three doubles. Two of them drove in runs to lead a 12-4 win for Tampa. On the Blue Jays side of things, Scotty, they were worse. They got swept by the Angels in Toronto. We welcome in all of our radio affiliates for El Coast to Coast on a Monday, Sirius XM 159, Sports Map, Sports Byline. Good to have you with us. So the Angels go into Toronto and sweep the series, and look who was at it again. First of all, this guy Trout had another great weekend. He homered again yesterday, homered for us on Friday night. How about a little Oppo Taco from Otani on Bally Sports West yesterday north of the border? Otani drives that one opposite way. That ball is hit well. Shohei Otani. Forget about it. Two-run home run, his 28. I mean, think about that. Uh, Judge has 49 homers, but boy, do they knob this guy every time he hits a home run. I mean, it is just, he gets more attention than anybody for a home run. Meanwhile, he's 
getting smoked by Judge. You know, they talk about this guy being an MVP because he pitches and hits home runs, but the real MVP's got 49 and he's not done yet. So that award's over. Uh, I agree with you. Finished. Uh, now Judge is going to win. The Brewers beat the Cubs yesterday 9-7. to I know that that one was a good one for you uh, there over the weekend, that's for sure. Brewers reliever Trevor Rosenthal has another setback during his rehab assignment. They traded for him at the deadline, Scotty. He still has not pitched for them. Doesn't look like he's going to be pitching for them anytime soon. Uh, a lot of these trades have been a disaster for some of these He's teams. a waste of time. The pot... <laughs> Speaking of guys having a bad day, uh, another really bad weekend for Hader. He didn't, but this, he wasn't part of this mess yesterday. But I mean, he gave up a billion runs uh, the other night. Royals beat the Padres 15 to seven. Salvi Perez, Scotty, on Valley Sports, Kansas City, giving it to San Diego. Salvi, deep left field, gone for a two-run home run. So the Royals have a four-run lead for a third time today. Yeah, I mean, this team's barely hanging on, right, by like a game and a half. So, I mean, they can't really afford to go to San Francisco and lose games to the Giants here at the early part of this week. They got a big game against Rodon tonight. You can't lose to the Royals, but they got their ass smoked by them. Pharrell, coast to coast. Justin Fields making his first ever start in the NFL, got sacked nine times. Right. And uh, Matt Nagy didn't bother letting his running backs, you know, chip blockers or, or take on pass rush responsibilities. And that is so irresponsible. You're going to see a lot of this coaching staff, hopefully, trying to use the traits of his that are special. And I think Fields will benefit from having a coaching staff that's a little smarter about how they use it. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. I think the Guardians are starting to command not just respect in terms of the central race, but they really should be in the American League overall. They probably figure, Kevin, well, let's just play 500 baseball the rest of the way. I don't think the Twins and the White Sox are good enough to put that into overdrive and overtake us at this point. So it's not one of those where, hey, look at our final schedule. We got 30 games left. Mm -hmm. We really need to go 20 and 10 to make the playoffs. They don't. Here you go. The Cleveland Guardians moving on in the playoffs. Only on Sports Grid. Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penguins. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take it for In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. In game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid.
we spent a lot of time talking about Fernando Tatis on this show over the last couple of weeks with all of his problems. And now uh, some more. The fallout from his steroid pop uh, is what, Carver High? He's losing sponsorships. Yeah, he's starting to lose a couple of them. He had a partnership with Adidas. That is over. Uh, Adidas says goodbye to Fernando Tatis Jr. So, look, we, we've said this a billion times. He's going to have to go away for a while, come back, uh, try to re-up his image at some point. But we'll always remember, Scotty. We will always remember uh, ha what happened with Fernando Tatis Jr. Yeah, good luck uh, building your right. image. Good luck. He's starting good from luck. scratch. Rock bottom. The Twins beat the Giants 8-3. They had a big weekend against them. Tigers beat the Rangers 9-8 in a game if you liked overs. Kyle Tucker will play for Team USA at the World Baseball Classic. And quite frankly, Scotty, at this point, who isn't playing for Team USA at the World Baseball Classic? Are they going to have enough room for everybody with everybody uh, joining on to the team uh, in the last minute? All right, before we get to tonight's games, here we go. Playoff races first. The American League, there you go. Uh, the division leaders on the left-hand side for you, Scotty. Houston now has opened up a three-and-a-half game lead on the Yankees for the first overall seed. The Rays have the top wild card, Seattle and Toronto, second and third. In the hunt, Orioles, one-and-a-half games back of the final wild card. The Twins now three games back, uh, excuse me, two games back, Scotty, of Cleveland, for the AL Central Division race right there. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, I, I like watching that Oriole team to see if, uh, you know, they can get it. And then, obviously, we're watching these other teams have problems like the Rays and the Jays. And, you know, I don't think the Yankees are going to actually blow that division at all. I think they're no. going to get a bye, and then everything falls into place from there. Uh, I, you know, the Twins are still there at three. But you start talking about being six games out, uh, I'd say you're finished. Yeah, the White Sox are finished. They're six out of the wild card. They're five and a half out of Cleveland for the AL Central. Uh, things start, And they play Kansas City uh, starting tomorrow, who they can't beat ever. They can never beat Kansas City, and they start a series with them tomorrow. So that'll probably really finish them. National League side, of course, the Dodgers have the best record. The teams with the two best records, Scotty, they start a series tomorrow in Queens, Dodgers and Mets. The Cardinals have opened up a big lead on Milwaukee for the Central. The Braves have an enormous lead for that, uh, lead for that top wild card spot. Then the Phillies are second, Padres third. Brewers a game and a half back of the Padres for the final wild card spot in the National League. Would that be something if the Padres blew that again two years in a row and not made the Yeah, playoff? if they, you know, th that's the story. Are they going to choke again and then blame Tatis for all their problems? And then the other thing is, we're going to find out how good the Mets really are in this series with the Dodgers. But Scherzer won't be pitching in that series because he pitched yesterday. So you're not going to see their best against the Dodgers. But it is going to be interesting to see how they stack up against them in this series in Queens. Let's get to tonight, Scotty. We do have games on a Monday night in Major League Baseball. We will start in Miami. Last game of a four-game wraparound series for the Marlins and the Dodgers. That's right. Tonight, Pablo Lopez goes for the Marlins. It was supposed to be Gonsal, and he's out. Grove is going to start the game now. For the Dodgers, Dodgers are still minus 165, plus a buck 40 for the fish. Seven and a half is the total. I got to tell you, uh, you know, I was on the Dodgers the whole time it was Gonsolin, but at that price and with Lopez going uh, at over a buck 40, if they were to hit that bet, that's not the worst uh, play I've ever seen in taking Miami. And remember, they already beat him once with uh, Sandy on the bump. Uh, Lopez is their other uh, best pitcher, if you will, in that rotation. I think he's got a shot tonight against the Dodgers. There's no bets, and they obviously don't care. And this guy Grove, you know, there's more people shopping at the Grove in L.A. than there are people that know who this pitcher is. I'll take a crack with Lopez. The Cardinals are in Cincinnati against the Reds tonight. Nicolas is on the mound for St. Louis. The Reds have Anderson going, minus 225 for the Redbirds 
Nine and a half, the hefty total at Great American tonight. Yeah, I'm still on the Cardinals. I think that game uh, and that series with the Braves took a lot out of them. I mean, that was no joke. Uh, Every game was crazy. Saturday, they scored the two in the bottom of the ninth. Uh, Sunday night, they get the eighth inning three-run homer in a game that was scoreless in the sixth. I think that series took its toll on the Cardinals. They got a good pitcher going tonight. They should be able to handle their business against that minor league team at Great American Ballpark. But I wouldn't be surprised at all if they lose this game. Seriously. Uh, Like, this is a game they just don't care about. That Braves series, they cared about. Every game was like a playoff game. And incidentally, if they uh, are in the playoffs, they're not playing uh, the Braves. That series isn't happening. I think I sent you the matchups. And right now, they wouldn't face them unless I'm mistaken. Uh, the Cubs will be in Toronto against the Blue Jays, coming off getting swept by the Angels. Jose Barrios goes for them tonight. One of the Cubs' young pitchers, Assad, is going for them. Minus 225 for the Jays, total of nine tonight. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the Jays uh, and uh, Barrios. I like him. Uh, it's my number one play, but, you know, the price is so bad. Uh, it's not even worth going to the window on, but I like the Jays here, and and I just the Cubs are awful. Red Sox are in Minnesota to take on the Twins. They open a series tonight. There we have Bello going for the Sox. Dylan Bundy going for Minnesota. Minus one fifteen for the Twins. Minus one oh five for the Sox. Eight and a half the total tonight. Yeah, I just don't trust the Bellow Twins pitching uh, for Boston tonight. I thought uh, could I get a, a decent shot with them it's minus a buck five now minus buck 15 for bundy and the twins i went with the twins uh and you know obviously there's not enough of a a, a sheet on on bello to see what he's done he's only thrown a 20 plus innings but bundy's thrown over 108 innings i'm gonna still go with bundy the pirates are in milwaukee tonight remember the last time these two played at pnc scotty the Pirates got them for the sweep. That was right after the trade deadline. Corbin Burns goes for the Brewers now. Eikhoff was supposed to go for the Pirates. Now we have a to-be-determined listed up there for the Buckos, Scotty. Uh, Milwaukee right now, heavy lumber, minus 350, seven and a half the total. Yeah, I want no part of this uh, minus 350 bit. But uh, the Brewers aren't losing to the Pirates in Milwaukee tonight. This is a crucial set of games for the Brewers. They've got to beat the Pirates. They've got to keep pace. They've got to stay in this thing. They can't afford to lose to the Pirates again. Remember when they got beat by the Pirates at PNC, that was when Hayter got traded and they quit. They just said, we're, not, we're just not going to try and we're going to lose. And they lost the games to the Pirates. It was embarrassing. I think they turn it around on the Bucks this week in Milwaukee. Frankie Montas for the Yankees tonight in Anaheim against the Angels. Suarez is going for them. Yankees minus 175, plus 145 for the Angels. Total of eight tonight. Well, I'll tell you what. I bet on uh, Montas and the Yankees, but I I don't trust them as far as I could spit. And, uh, you know, I'm sure they're going to screw this series up, too, with the Angels. Uh, It's just a matter of when. Will it be tonight with... Montas, who's faced the Angels a thousand times, or is it going to be over the next two nights uh, that they lose the series? The fact that they split with the A's, uh, they shouldn't be allowed to be fed. I I don't think the team should be fed at all. No meals, no nothing. They're so awful now. I can't even watch them. Yeah, I can't even watch them. The only way, the only way they make up for that split is if they sweep the Angels. Anything less than a sweep against the Angels, it's been a total disaster road trip. I got two more games for you when we come back, and then the college football for the weekend. How's Scott Frost doing out in Nebraska right now? Oh, he's doing great in Lincoln. They love him. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. 
Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The morning after. Where do you rank the Nets in the Eastern Conference? Are they a top three team, a top five team? Are they the favorites in your mind? I think Boston's better than them. I think Philadelphia's going to be a resurgent team. Look for them to be better. And listen, folks, they don't have an easy start. New Orleans, Toronto, Memphis, Milwaukee, Dallas to begin the season. There's too many unknowns with this team. I think you go under 52 and a half for the Nets. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. The chemistry that Kelsey and Mahomes have is just so great. He is the longest tenured Chiefs player on offense right now. Like, he is the guy who's been there with Andy Reid and with Mahomes the longest. I think the only pass catcher on the roster who would have caught a pass when Alex Smith was the uh, the quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs. Like, that kind of institutional memory for Kelsey, I, I think he's just locked into 90 receptions, 1,000 yards. I just don't think he can be worse than that. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Paul Goldschmidt is minus 1450 to win the NL MVP award. The question is not whether this guy is going to win the NL MVP. It's can he get the NL triple crown? He knows number two, Nolan Arenado on the same team. 25 to 1. Arenado's not jumping him at this point. So Paul Goldschmidt looks like he locked this thing up. Only on Sports Grid. Pharrell, coast to coast. I did have a source told me the Bills were not aware when they drafted him in the sixth round. However, they were aware when they cut Matt Hawk. You can only walk up to a certain line and say, okay, they knew that this may be coming, and they still stuck with him anyway. So I think that the fan base is upset about that. It sounds to me as though Matt Areza and his agent uh, were just hoping that this was going to go away and nobody was going to find out about it. And uh, they were sadly mistaken. The Sports Grid Network. Before we finish those uh, two baseball games, Carver, how you got some NFL news here late this afternoon? I certainly do, and it's something that we've been talking about a lot, Scotty. Jimmy Garoppolo and the San Francisco 49ers. We thought maybe they would cut him, maybe they would trade him. They will do neither. Jimmy Garoppolo and the 49ers agreed to a restructured one-year contract that will keep the quarterback in San Fran for this season. The contract contains no trade and no tag clauses, assuring Garoppolo that he stays in San Fran this year and has the freedom to go wherever he wants when the season is over. The one-year restructured deal is worth $6.5 million in base, fully guaranteed, per sources to Adam Schefter. He has another total of $500,000 in roster bonuses. He also has playtime bonuses that can boost it another $9 million Let's say if he replaces Lance or Lance gets hurt. So one year, $7 million, and it could get as high as 16 if he plays a lot for Jimmy G. Well, I mean, that's a fair deal considering he was going to uh, probably lose $24 million if they got rid of him. Nobody was going to pay him $24 million at this point. Certainly not the 49ers. So giving him around $7 million to stand on the sideline. And believe me, you, if they stink with Lance... They're going to put him back in there because the reality is, Mike, is that all he ever does is win. I think he's 31 and 14 as a starter for the Niners. Two title games, a Super Bowl, and this kid's never done anything. He's still wearing diapers. Uh, I still think, you know, for me, Jimmy Garoppolo's the choice, and he's the better quarterback, but they're obsessed with Trey Lance in San Francisco, and they treat that kid like he's Steve Young, and it's I think it's laughable. 
I think this is a very, very interesting situation because this team has Super Bowl aspirations. They've been gung-ho that Lance is going to be their guy. He don't play well in September, Scotty. You know what the fans and the media are going to be doing to Shanahan up there. They've left. He's left himself uh, quite the situation with keeping him there, but it's good insurance. It is good well, insurance. I, it, it's smart. So Lynch keeps a Super Bowl quarterback standing on the sideline, and if things don't work out with Lance, they go right back to Garoppolo. And, yeah. and by the time, you know, December rolls around and they get a playoff berth, which they will, they should be a playoff team. They're really good. Uh, this is a, a deep, talented team, and they just are changing quarterbacks. So if anything happens in September, October, they're going to go to Garoppolo, and they could still go to the Super Bowl with Garoppolo. How funny would it be if he gets them to the Super Bowl and they win the Super Bowl and he can walk out the door and go wherever he wants and they can do nothing about it. They're not, no trade. He's going to be there the whole year and he's going to make, you know he's going to get that money. You know he's going to play and he's going to end up making $16, $17 million. In my opinion, it's only a matter of time before he takes the team over again because he's the best quarterback. I, I could see it 1,000%. You know I don't believe in that kid. Uh, this might have been down the road. Maybe a smart move. Uh, if they do make the switch, it'll shatter the kid. That's for right. sure. But you got to win. You got to win when you got to win. That's how it goes. All right, two more baseball games tonight. Phillies are in Arizona against the Diamondbacks. Ranger Danger Suarez goes for the Phillies. Madison Bumgarner for Arizona. Phillies minus 175. D-backs plus 145. Total of nine. Well, you know, everybody tells me the Phillies should win. They have to win. It's too important for them to lose. But they lost to the Pirates yesterday and had to fly to Arizona. I won't deny Suarez is pitching better than uh, Madison Bumgarner. But I got to tell you, there was something about that plus buck 58 that I was about to take a shot on today with the D-backs. They won three in a row against the White Sox. And they go home to take on a really good team. And, I mean, I think they got a shot tonight. Now, I know everybody's telling me, that, you know, and I, I won't deny I was on the Phillies, but I, I was so close to betting on the Diamondbacks. I'm going to probably get in on this game in-game to see if the D-backs give them a game. And, and then the same thing goes for this last game you're going to talk about. Yep, final game of the night, Padres and the Giants in San Francisco. Of course, as we mentioned earlier, Clevenger and Rodon tonight. The Giants, Scotty, right now, minus 125. Padres plus 105, total of flat seven. Well, you know, I was on Rodon last night, right? But the way they're playing, the way they got swept, the way they're 2-8 and eight in their last 10, hitting a buck 20 uh, in that stretch, not scoring runs. I think the best value play of the day is the Padres. I got them at a buck 20 uh, overnight, and then it moved to 118, 115. Now it's 105. So you see what the number's doing. I think the Padres have a legitimate shot. They're eight and five against the Giants this year. The Giants are playing terrible baseball today. Uh, they go into the series having struggled. You know, the last two weeks they've been awful. Now they'll probably go home with Rodon and get it done. But I think the bet is. The Padres, the best value on the board tonight for a shot for an upset would be the Padres in, in Oracle. There you go. That is your night in Major League Baseball. Let's make it happen, Scotty. College football was back over the weekend. And I know we were talking earlier, like pain days a week from Thursday, NFL starting. This week, Scotty, you get the whole kit and caboodle, full schedule of right. college football, including some monster matchups we will talk about all week. Notre Dame and Ohio State, Georgia and Oregon, Penn State and Purdue on Thursday night. Lots of juiciness. Let's talk about week zero on Saturday. Northwestern, the Wildcats rally across the pond in Dublin to beat Nebraska 31-28. to The turning point, they say, Scotty. Nebraska took a 28-17 lead, and then they decided to do this on Fox. More of the workload. Oh, and an onside kick. Northwestern is on it. At the 45, Scott Frost going for the mortal blow in this game, and now Northwestern has a short field. Ugh, I don't know about that. Well, uh, that was a great bet on your part, taking Northwestern. Uh, I know you had that game. Uh, and then 
uh, literally, uh, you know, I thought, first of all, so we're clear, you and I went through all these games on Friday, and I literally yeah. nailed almost every single game. And I, I still will stand by this. I, I hit every game. And the one I bet the most money on was Florida Atlantic, as I said earlier uh, to Jason Scott of BetMGM. But the I, I have to say all the games were so atrocious. Who cares? Like, I just wasn't yeah, into was any of it. I know you got excited for that Hawaii game. They got their ass beat because no, they're terrible. I, I, so I, is Vandy. <laughs> I'm not buying that they scored 60-some points and that suddenly Vanderbilt is a force in the SEC. Not right. happening. I, I was excited about it until Hawaii started getting their teeth kicked in, uh, and then yeah. I got to go to sleep. Uh, so that's about how excited I was for that game. Uh, I'll finish off, and you hit the FAU game on the spread. I had to sweat it out, but I just got under the 59 there at 43-13. Oh. Just got under the 59 for that FAU-Charlotte yeah. game I was on uh, on Saturday. Here's Frost. First, he's going to defend the dopey onside kick. And then a reporter, Scotty, asks him if he's going to step down as the Nebraska head coach. Here we go. We've been talking to the kids about being aggressive and attacking this thing for weeks. And I think they did that. Um, Part of it was we had had a couple things that we wanted to be aggressive on. We had one earlier that we wanted to see if we got the look we wanted. And we we got a look that was really good for it. And... Uh, I made that call, so that's on me. Um, you know, at the at that point in the game, I thought all the momentum was on our side. I thought if we got it, we could end the game. Um, and it, the way we were playing, uh, you know, I I felt at that point like uh, like we had a really good chance of Stretch winning the out. game, and I felt like maybe we were the better team. And you know, you, you can't really foresee them scoring 14 straight. Things don't go, start going in the right direction. Is there any point in time where you would consider stepping down? No, absolutely not. Um, I love Nebraska. I'm going to fight fight with the guys uh, as long as I can fight. Listen, you know, uh, I just don't have any feelings about this guy other than he's an atrocious yeah. football coach. He is horrible. Now, I have argued this point for several years now. He has been there long enough and failed miserably every single year. He blew that game with his stupid decision-making. He cost them the game, and they've done it again. They went out and lost a crappy Northwestern in a game that they had in the bag. I have to tell you, I had the governor, and I love Tim Brando, but he's told me on the air live that he's going to win multiple Big Ten championships and a national championship in Nebraska. That guy will never win anything. And what they should do is fire his ass now before the bloodletting gets any worse. He has been an absolute joke at Nebraska. And I got to tell you, Tom Osborne built national title, championship teams, powerhouses. Nebraska has never been this low. I mean, they look like they shouldn't even be in the Big Ten. They're that bad. They really are. It's like unbelievable to me. How in God's name does this guy still have his job? How many effing games does he have to lose before they finally realize, I mean, this is Nebraska football, and they are now the laughing stock of college football. Nice job, Scott. We know you love Nebraska, but listen, you sucked as a player too. You're even worse as a coach. He was never anything, and don't even tell me he was because you'll get me started and I'll probably have a heart attack. Scott Frost, my effing ass. He's I can coach that team better drunk. I mean, Utah State beat UConn 31 20. Illinois hammered Wyoming. Uh, North Texas beat UTEP, unfortunately. Nevada beat New Mexico State, and they covered uh, in that game, Nevada. Against North Texas. Texas beat them twice last year and kicked their ass again. Uh, and Nevada, they lost all their players. They're supposed to suck. They still roll. They're still good. Fantasy Sports Today. Don't let James Robinson's presence in camp, no matter what reports tell you, put you off of Travis Etienne. Even if early it's slow to the uptake, stay the course because I'm telling you Travis Etienne's better talent, 
He's the guy they invested heavy draft capital. They need that return. And that rapport with Trevor Lawrence is not to be overlooked. And that's a very important thing, especially for a young quarterback to have guys in the offense he trusts. So we want to take advantage of people's negative perceptions. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. I think both the Braves and the Mets are playoff teams. They are two of the top three best teams in the National League. And quite frankly, neither of them are going to get the bye. The bye is going to the Los Angeles Dodgers, who are by far, not kind of the best team in baseball, by far a wide variety and margin the best team in Major League Baseball. They're going to get the bye. So one way or the other, the Mets are going to be in a situation that they're going to have to grind through all of October, as are the Braves. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. There's too many question marks for me, DRS. The talent drop-off that he is dealing with from those dogs over at Clemson and what OU is going to have on the defensive side of the football is quite a bit. Donnie, since when is OU not just filling out, right? At least first-team all-offense. That's just not the way this group lines up here. Too many question marks for me year one. The schedule's too easy to go under the eight and a half. Only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. I'm not buying you dinner because I'm wrong. I'm buying you dinner because you're in town and it's a nice thing for a friend to do to another friend. Just buy them dinner. No, no, you, I have to pick up my phone and hold it right now because it's <laughs> buzzing nonstop <laughs> because you're talking. Well, that's what I do. So that's kind of my thing. It's kind of hard to stop me from talking. <laughs> kind of hard to stop me from talking. People have tried for 45 years and it hasn't really worked yet. So the Bostonian versus the book. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Gam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. tell you carver high the rory uh comeback was just rock star status to steal 18 million i mean you might as well uh rob the federal reserve it, it might have been like one of those movies where he goes under the lasers and comes in through the roof and then gets the diamonds and everybody's cash and out he goes how about the job he did on that uh scheffler just eating it on sunday unbelievable Rory, uh, he made a lot of big putts on that back nine yesterday, but that entire thing was Scheffler choking over the last 27 holes. I mean, the guy had a five, six shot lead. He was cruising along and he just played miserable yesterday. Opened the door for Rory. Rory steals it, ends up getting the fat $18 million check, the dopey FedEx trophy that they made matter more than it actually does uh, yesterday after. Oh, this is so great for the PGA Tour, blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, all their guys are going out the door. More guys, Scotty. Cameron Smith, Harold Varner III, Joaquin Neiman, Cameron Tringali, others uh, expected to join Liv possibly for their event in Boston this weekend. So uh, more guys going out the door, that's for sure. Not Rory, though. I got to tell you, he had, no, the, he had the wand going. Some of those putts were sick. How about when he chipped in uh, off that yeah. green with that screamer and it hit the stick and went seven feet and he drained that? I mean, this guy was hitting everything. It, it was looking like the ocean to him. I thought that plus 900 was finished when he triple bogeyed the first hole on Thursday. There you go, baby. Cash it. Rory finishes the year good for us, Scotty. Here on How about this guy? He's won that thing three times. All right. Uh, J.P. Finley's yeah. our buddy from the fan middays in D.C. And uh, also, uh, we've had him on the show uh, a couple weeks ago talking about this team. 
and all of their issues and their quarterback. But uh, JP, we got to start with, thanks a lot for coming back on. I, I got to get the skinny on uh, Brian Robinson. Like what happened? All I know is uh, basically up here, what we've heard is that he was like basically carjacked or something, right? And shot. Tell me the story. Yeah. So the, the details are still emerging. It's still under investigation by the DC police, but he was on H street Northeast, which is a pretty popular bar restaurant area. This was yesterday, um, late afternoon, like five thirty, six o'clock. He was at a crab restaurant called the crab boss. And he got into an altercation with, uh, two, two young people trying to rob him. Um, there's some reports saying they tried to grab his chain others that they were trying to carjack him. But uh, whatever ended up happening, there was a scuffle. The report is Robinson tried to defend himself and he was shot twice, uh, non-life threatening. He's since posted to his Instagram page that he's left the hospital, surgery went great. Got, he thanked God for, uh, for his you know progress. And Ron Rivera talked today, said he's talked to Brian Robinson, that he's doing great, he's got a great attitude. Um, it seems like he should have a full recovery that to me is is as a person i don't know that that to me means as a football player um from obviously the most important thing here is that robinson is okay and and that trumps the rest of what i'm about to say but uh i, I do think this happening you know less than about 36 hours before cut date cuts are due in the nfl makes things really interesting i mean he had pretty much taken over the rb1 job here in washington now i think it's going to be more of a committee again with Antonio Gibson in the lead. And I won't be surprised at all if Robinson lands on the NFI, the non-football injury list, and, and that would lock him out of playing for at least the first four games. I, the guy got shot yesterday, and they got to trim the roster tomorrow. Like, it, it's hard to balance that. So Gibson was going to be the kick returner, and that means Robinson was getting the gig, and he had had such a great camp. And now Gibson will go back into that job after everyone said uh, that he just wasn't having a good camp and wasn't running the ball well and didn't know, uh, frankly, the offense like they thought he knew it, like he had excelled last year. So they kind of are in a predicament. What I want to know is, uh, do you know anything about where he was shot? I don't know it. I, I haven't seen this firsthand, but there's enough information that it's lower leg. I've, I've kind of heard it was – the uh, medical term, I guess, is his glute, but there's some talk of knees. It's it's legs, which for a running back obviously isn't good, but uh, it, it seems like it's nothing too, too serious is all we keep being told, and, and they believe there could be a full recovery. I mean, it's possible he plays this year. I don't know that that happens, and I, I would think it's going to take a little bit of time to, to watch it all pan out. I would also say – Gibson knows the offense. I mean, this is a guy that's gone for over 2,000 yards in the last two seasons, over 20 touchdowns in the last two seasons. He puts the ball on the ground. That's what they don't like. He fumbles. And oh. and he leaves yards out there, too. I mean, there are, there are opportunities where he could get more yardage that he doesn't always take advantage of. But it's not it, – if he ends up being the starter again, it's not a terrible option to have. So uh, did they catch the two – punks that he got into the fight with that shot him no and uh i spoke with dc police a little earlier today they're expected to put out a surveillance video the, one of the biggest problems in this city is you've got young kids running around causing trouble and and the 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 theory anyway is that there's they're able to be relatively reckless because they don't have any fear of repercussions because they're minors and as of now the the police are saying that they believe it was a 15 year old and a 17 year old that the stolen getaway car they weren't even old enough to drive so they uh you know obviously we have the same issues in new york city so the other day i did a story about you guys had like i think um 12 uh, people were shot over the weekend in dc and then i joked on the air here that uh, we average 18 so you, you got a ways to go before you catch up to us but the same thing happens here jp they have um, constant uh, car theft rings, stealing cars. The other day, um, this 
cop got beaten severely and they were in a stolen 740i Beamer. And you know where that went? That went to Africa down at the pier. Uh, so what they do is they steal the cars, they commit crimes in them and they know they're on camera and they don't even care because it's a stolen car. And then the cars get driven down to the uh, port in Newark and they get uh, put on crates and, and they go to Africa and they're sold. You never see them again. It happens all the time. But in DC, uh, they're having a lot of these reckless, crazy youth wreaking havoc in the city. Same in New York, it, it, it's violence and, and murders and people getting shot and, and um, Asian hate and black hate, it's all over the place. Are you experiencing that in DC like the reports say that you are? I mean, I know that in the area Robinson was shot in yesterday, there were four shootings in about 36 hours. And, and what's crazy is that area is about a, a mile, maybe a mile and a half to the actual U.S. Capitol, um, like the actual Capitol building. So, yeah, it, it's it's a problem. It's been a problem all summer. Um, it, it kind of becomes a little highlighted when it's an athlete on the other end. But but certainly it's something that people got to figure out. I don't know what those answers are. That's that's above my pay grade. But ho hopefully people could just put the guns down, man. When you were living there and doing your show on January 6th, when that riot happened at the Capitol and you lived there and that was your city, uh, what went through your mind when you saw that uh, unfurling that afternoon? Like when I watched it on television live, I was like, I remember saying to my wife, I'm like, this is insanity. This is crazy. They're going in. They're going to tear it down. They're going to kill people. They're going to string people up. This is, these people are animals. What did you think when you saw that chaos at the Capitol in your city? It was depressing. It, was, it made me angry. I mean, it was like you described. It was, it was impossible to believe it was happening here, frankly. I, 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 just, I was stunned. It was stunning and depressing. It really was. Let me ask you on a, on a brighter note, the commanders didn't look that bad the other night. I know these games don't count. Are they ready to go? Uh, are people worried about them with Carson Wentz or is there a positive note here? You know, they went 0-3 in the preseason and I don't think they look particularly good, but they didn't look necessarily bad either. So I think people are excited offensively for what they could become. But honestly, Robinson was a big part of that. And, and there's at least uncertainty there. Um, but Jahan Dotson, the rookie first round pick should help him a lot. Logan Thomas is a, a stud tight end. that has been working back from a knee injury. He's actually been looking pretty good running around more and more. So I, I think offensively, there's reasons for optimism. I, I worry about the defense. They were 31st in the NFL in uh, third down conversions last season. I don't think they've done much to, to get better. And if you look at their corner depth and their linebacker depth, they got they got real holes. And I, people are like, oh, comb the waiver wire. The reason those guys are getting cut from other teams, too. So uh, I, I worry about the defense, frankly, more than the offense. So no Chase Young for at least the first four, right? And then yep. uh, McLaren wasn't ranked in the top 100 players. I was a little surprised by that. He's a badass. Yeah, I, and especially he just got the big contract, so sometimes that generates kind of more notoriety around the league. But we'll see. I mean, this is the first year he's playing with a really big-armed quarterback, a really physically capable quarterback, and, and I think that could help him. Um, the stats have been good, but the wide receivers in the NFL have just gotten so damn good, and the numbers are so far out there that, I mean – just look at Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase in the last two years. I mean, as rookies putting up 13, 1400 yards, Terry's always kind of been a little over a thousand or 1100. And, and there's, there is a, a gap there. So that kid was uh, Robinson played at Alabama. He was a, a incredible talent and they were excited to have him. I, I saw that like the whole team, like front office owner, the Snyder and his wife went to the hospital Rivera. They all went there. I thought yeah. that was a pretty strong showing by the franchise to be there for the kid uh, in a, I have to say, in a franchise that has been terribly maligned of late, made fun of, the stadium's the worst in the league, the owner's a joke. People, all they do is rip them all, all day, every day. 
I thought they all showed up for their boy, and I, I uh, give them, you know, uh, a hat tip for that. Yeah, I agree with you there. I, I think um, if you you should show up for your players, and I think that's an obvious one. The young man's family isn't there, and you got to show support. And I think there was such a sigh of relief that that by and large he's considered to be okay. All right, JP, great stuff. Always good to have you on Coast to Coast. Thanks for uh, filling in the holes for us on Brian Robinson. We'll catch up as the commanders start their season and with everything going on in D.C. Stay safe, my man. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. All right, thanks a lot, uh, JP Finley at the Fan in D.C. 106.7. Carver, hi. I want to go back to uh, the college football because I know we're going to talk a lot about it uh, all week long, but really Thursday night's right around the corner doing push-ups. And I am excited for the backyard brawl. Yes, Thursday night uh, is the first big night of college football. You will get the backyard brawl. It is back. West Virginia and Pitt will square off on Thursday night. Also, Central Michigan will visit Oklahoma State, Penn State, and Purdue, New Mexico State, and Minnesota. There are five or six other games that involve a heavy playing and nobody uh, that's just on Thursday night, Scotty. I didn't even get to the I can't wait yet. to see tomorrow on Coast to Coast if Carver High is going to roll with the Panthers and if he's going to take Penn State on the road in West Lafayette at Ross 8 against the Spoiler Makers. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, some things remain the same. College and football the today. Of Alabama and winning SEC champions. It's the island of misfit tour. Fantasy sports so today. You have to understand that. Can they survive those first four games? Pro football Dude, today. To this franchise, they are comical. Now, I'm not making light of the injuries. This is a brutal rash. In game live, you can all take access. Points. You can take the money line. And the sports book, if you shop around, you can get it at 133. But um, that's my best bet on the night, Joe. So that's the one I'm going big. In I'm game go. live, prime time. I'm a bit nostalgic. I'm going with an international, Jason Day and Sergio Garcia. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pharrell, coast to coast. I did have a source told me the Bills were not aware when they drafted him in the sixth round. However, they were aware when they cut Matt Hawk. You can only walk up to a certain line and say, okay, they knew that this may be coming, and they still stuck with him anyway. So I think that the fan base is upset about that. It sounds to me as though Matt Areza and his agent uh, were just hoping that this was going to go away and nobody was going to find out about it. And uh, wow. they were sadly mistaken. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. The chemistry that Kelsey and Mahomes have is just so great. He is the longest tenured Chiefs player on offense right now. Like, he is the guy who's been there with Andy Reid and with Mahomes the longest. I think the only pass catcher on the roster who would have caught a pass when Alex Smith was the uh, the quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs. Like, that kind of institutional memory for Kelsey, I, I think he's just locked into 90 receptions, 1,000 yards. I just don't think he can be worse than that. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. Where do you rank the Nets in the Eastern Conference? Are they a top three team, a top five team? Are they the favorites in your mind? I think Boston's better than them. I think Philadelphia's going to be a resurgent team. Look for them to be better. And listen, folks, they don't have an easy start. New Orleans, Toronto, Memphis, Milwaukee, Dallas to begin the season. There's too many unknowns with this team. I think you go under 52 and a half for the Nets. The Sports Grid Network.
All right, fast forward for all in your facial, the Ferrella finish. New York sports betting posts their first $200 million week since June on apps. That's pretty nice, a $200 million week. Elderly woman slaps a male flight attendant who confiscated her gin. She got tossed off the plane. Don't ever take an old lady's gin and tonic. Go for gin. <laughs> she got all hostile and slapped the flight attendant. Oscar Mayer to sell cold dog, hot dog flavored popsicles. I am not interested in the ruination, Carver High, of hot dogs. Florida police say a man allegedly tried to purchase a young girl from her parents for 100000 at a grocery store. Listen, I'll give you a hundred grand for your daughter. <laughs> I mean, hold on, give me five minutes. <laughs> I got to think about this. Texas high school hazing incident with hot sauce and lap dances sends students to the emergency room. They made them put Tabasco covered cookies in their tukas and run around and then do lap dances naked on cheerleaders. Now they're all toast. Little known law restricts who can buy whipped cream in New York. You got to be 21 to get a can of whipped cream, Carver High. Otherwise, we're all going to be doing whippets. 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle card sells for $12.6 million, shattering the record of $7 million for the Hannes Wagner. Italian man tests positive for COVID, monkeypox, and HIV all on the same day. He had the trifecta going, Carver High. Woman drives for an hour before discovering a naked man in her car. You're driving along, <laughs> you look in the rear view mirror, there's some guy back there, slow poking it. He had it all going nude, can't have it. At least two people killed, one injured in an Oregon grocery store shooting. What is it about going to the grocery store anymore, Carver High? I'm scared to go down to the grocery store now. GTD is next, we'll see you tomorrow on Coast to Coast at 3 p.m. Eastern. Carver High, are you still going to the grocery store? Can you pick me up some whipped cream, please? No? I think that's a no.